Hey guys, it's Ann here from Pearson Bell at Home in Old Town Spring, which is in Spring, Texas, just north of Houston. When you hop on, just let me know where you're from and uh, tell me what the weather's like. I know a lot of you, it's September 1st. A lot of you are experiencing better weather than us. It was quite warm today, um, pretty much 98, but felt like 108, I think. Really, really hot. So today we're gonna be doing um, something that I've always wanted to do. Uh, my friend Stephanie does these in a class and I thought I'd give my try on these. These are called charcuterie boards. Um, you, they are for like meats and processed meats and cheeses. Uh, so we're gonna do those today. So we're gonna use all Dixie Bell products on these guys. So as soon as I see you guys hop on, we'll go ahead and um, get started. Again, just drop where you're from and your temperature. Hopefully you're having better temperature than we are. It's a get, bit hot. I'm sitting down today because I need to squish up in this little tiny um, box. So. Hopefully you can see me, but mostly we want you to be able to see the project we're working on. So the first step, which you're gonna do, uh, you can just grab these little one inch uh, boards. These are 15 inches in diameter. You can get larger ones. You can get them from your Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, whatever else you have, if it's a Menards or what have you. They are a little rough. So before I get started on these, I wanna sand them up a little bit. Uh, we're actually going to be using the Voodoo Gel Stain by Dixie Bell. So we want to go ahead and make sure that it's a nice, even surface, nothing too uh, rough, because that'll uh, take the stain a little bit darker. And again, everything we do today, you can apply to furniture and other projects in the future. All right, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and go with this about a 120 grit. And I'm just going to sand it. There's some really rough spots here. You guys can see that's really, really rough right here. And that's gonna translate um, through on the uh, finished product if I don't sand that off. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that sanded. And we're using a 120 grit. So you do wanna have something pretty low grit, 120, uh, 100, maybe 80, depends on how rough it is. So we're just gonna kinda go around the whole piece, gonna smooth that out. Some parts are really hard to smooth out. I'm gonna get that smooth here. We're gonna go all the way around this piece. And again, it's with a 120 grit sanding block. All right. There's some really rough spots. You might have to do a little attention to those little spots to get those smooth because you don't want that to be rough when you're serving on these. And you can certainly find bigger. You can probably cut your own. Uh, you can cut, make them square. There's no, uh, any particular rhyme or reason. I just have these rounds. I like them for various projects that we do here in our shop. We also hold classes here too. So if you're local, you can certainly book a class, a private class. We do them. Um, we like everybody to know each other in our current conditions that we have. All right, so I'm gonna get that nice and smooth right there. All right, so smooth it out. All right, so we got all those little rough parts smooth. Now I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna have a little roughness here, so I'm gonna go with the grain and just give it a light sanding on top. And this one's actually really nice. There's no knot holes on either side. The other ones I worked with all had knot holes on them. So as you're working with it, you can decide what side you want to be your top and what side you want to be the bottom. All right, and guys, when you hop on, just tell me where you're from. All right, so I got that all sanded even. Now I do like to go back, this is a fine sandpaper. I do like to go back and just kind of get that softer. You'll feel the difference. I like to go by feel. 
And I'm gonna do both sides because I don't know which side I want to be the top. Usually I wait till those are stained before I decide, or if there was a big knot hole in the bottom, I'd probably leave that on the bottom, or if it was on one side or the other, it would be my bottom. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a nice, this is a fine grit. So probably 220, doesn't say these were just some I had laying in the shop. So we just tend to use these a lot. All right, so now she's all sanded up. And we don't wanna spray this with water to open the pores up of the grain, or the grain up of the wood, but I wanna get some of that sandiness off. So I'm just gonna take a little um, paper shop cloth here, and I'm going to lightly mist it. So, and you can also use a tack cloth if you have them. I have them somewhere, I don't know where they are. I think they're at my house so all right so we get that nice and cleaned off get all of that sand sanding mess off of your surface okay so now it's ready for staining all right so what I do um, I like to use things that are disposable so I usually buy these are double the size I buy these at you know, any thrift store, like a dollar store, probably Walmart. And I like this with the green on top because it gives me like a little handle. So I cut them in half so they're more manageable. And then I also get little throwaway bowls there. And we're going to be using Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain. It is water-based. And between this one, I do like this one a lot. I love up in smoke. Um, I do blend a lot. So a lot of times if I want a more barn wood look, I'll take the tobacco road as my base and I'll overlay it with some up in smoke to give it a more barn wood look. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and pour some of this in my container. All right, and I do like to dampen my sponge just a little bit. So I want it to ha I don't want it to absorb all the stain. So I want it to be able to release the stain onto the piece I'm working on. And I do like to put these on Lazy Susans while I'm working on the staining portion. And I like to also have it hang just a little bit over the edge of the table. The reason is I like to get the edges here. It makes it so much easier than trying to do it on the table. All right. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just, I just apply the stain kind of willy-nilly. Do go in the grain of your wood though. So not too willy-nilly, I guess. Okay. It's harder for me to do this sitting down. I normally do all of my projects like this, standing up. But it doesn't matter, it'll still get done. I just like to even that out. And on these, I do like to do the top and the bottom. Um, one, because I wanna decide which side I want to be the top. And also, I like to have a finished product. So if someone sees the bottom, it's not gonna be ugly and all that good stuff. So well, how I do my edges is like I said, I have this overhanging here on the table, right off the table and on the uh, Lazy Susan. And I'm just gonna go around and turn and get those edges. If you guys have any questions, just drop them down. These have become very popular and I see them all the time. So why not make your own? Or you may decide that you rather have someone make it for you or you might wanna take a class and do it of hands-on but a little guidance here so either way we empower you to to learn and like I said you can do this doesn't have to be on a round piece of wood it could be square or rectangle doesn't matter okay just gonna go ahead and get all around the edges here and this makes it so much easier Make sure I get my nice 
even as sometimes I get a little edge, a little of the stain on the edge. So I wanna make sure I get that evened out because it'll be darker there if I leave it. Okay. Okay, all the way around. We'll make sure we don't miss any spots. Okay. All right, so we've got this one side done. And what we'll do is just let that dry and we'll flip it over and do the back side um, or it might be the top side. We'll decide once it's completely stained. A lot of times I want whatever side I'm working on that I want to be the top, I'll let it dry and if I need it to be just a little darker, a little richer, I'll go ahead and put a second coat of stain on it. So once this is dry, like I said, we'll go ahead and do the back side, but for the, for the power of live we already have one stained and ready to go to the next step so i'm going to move this out of the way all right okay so this one we've already gotten stained so this is much darker than the back side so this had one coat of stain on it this side has two coats of the voodoo gel stain on it like i said it's water-based so it's easy cleanup you can wash uh, totally wash up soap and water not a big deal very easy all right so my next step is i want to do a stencil on this one and you can do your own with like a cricut or a um, silhouette if you do let this dry about 24 hours sometimes i've uh, noticed i pull up my stain if i do it too quick so for this, I wanted to do, this is one of my favorite stencils and I rarely get to use it. And you can totally measure it or you can eyeball it. So this one has some little pluses here and I got this stencil. This was at Michael's on sale because I don't ever pay full price for uh, the stencils at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that off. Let's get this lined up. So I want to kind of get it centered on the piece and centered there. All right, so we want to make sure it's nice and centered. So these great little pluses there to kind of help you out. All right, so this one I will go ahead and tape just so it doesn't move on me. So we are gonna do two different colors. And for this, like I said, our background color is Tobacco Road. I'm going to use buttercream for the word Paris and the bottom word here, the Rue. And my number nine, I'm gonna do um, in Vintage Duck Egg. So I just want a little bit different color there. So we're gonna start with our buttercream. So I'm just gonna pour just a, you use very, very little. You know I love to stencil and there's many ways you can do it. You can do it with a brush. You can stipple it with a brush. You can use a pouncer, pretty much anything. I typically use makeup sponges. It's my favorite way to use them. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just dip it in. I dip it and then I kind of pull it off. So when you get it dipped in your sponge will be a little kind of wet so I do like to use the table I'm working with or a cloth and I just pounce it off now we're going to go ahead and I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down so we're gonna do the Paris first and we're just gonna pounce no smearing if you smear it it's gonna go underneath your stencil and you will be sad This stencil is a little bit tricky. It's got a lot of parts to it that want to lift up on me. Okay. And you know what? It's okay if you mess it up. If you have bleed through, that's fine. Uh, you can always go back and sand it a little bit to make it look deliberately old. You can dry brush over it. So it's never a bad thing. Just 
take those as happy mistakes. So we just keep pouncing. This is again buttercream. This is a Dixie Belle buttercream. Pounce. So if you have any questions, just drop them down in the box. And if you have friends that need to see the video, make sure you pass it along to your friends and your family. And of course, give us one of these on our page. We like that. See, this one's kind of tricky. It's got that little R right here, that little part wants to lift up on me. So sometimes just hold it down. Get it in there. Whew. Sometimes it likes to lift. Just lift with it. All right. Okay, I'm gonna stand up a little bit so I can get a little bit more leverage. I feel like I'm really tiny down there. Okay. This one has lots of little areas on this particular stencil. And like I said, if you do cut out with the silhouette, a trick I have learned is if you take the heat gun, it will help your vinyl stick to your surface, but it can also pull up your stains. So you gotta be careful. So I usually wait 24 hours before using anything with the vinyl sticky stencils. At least that's been my experience. There are people that can do magical things with that. And sometimes it just doesn't work out for me that way, so. All right, so I've got my Paris done. Right now I'm gonna go down to the bottom here. Okay. It's a little bit easier to do these letters. And it's up to you if you wanna have full, full on coverage. Don't go too thick. So if you want fuller coverage, you're gonna to need to do a second, um, second coat. So you just gotta be patient with it, let it dry. And then do a second coat. If you try to do a second coat when it's still wet, it will pull up that paint. And so it won't give you the coverage you're looking for. So we just pounce that off so we don't have that bleed through underneath your stencil. And like I said, if it happens, you just kind of sand it or dry brush it to fix that. We're going to go over this just real quick because it was some kind of empty spots right there. Whew, okay. And put that out of the way. All right, and we're gonna do our number nine here with the vintage duck egg. And I do put these in the FIFO bottles, not always. Not always my friend here. All right, we're just gonna take the lid off like I did yesterday. This one's, I think, a little thick on the lid, yeah. So again, I like to use my little makeup sponge. And I just dip it in my paint. Ooh, that's a lot. Okay, and make sure when you know it's ready, it's not shiny anymore. It's just dull and dry looking, um, but still got paint on it. All right, so then you're gonna go ahead and do the rest of your stencil here. And we've got little bits here, so you're gonna have to be a little patient. And it's really all about pressing up and down if you try to smear it, it will definitely go under your stencil. Okay. So if you do one that's custom, you can put your name on it. Or if you're really good at handwriting, you can get handy and, and just paint it by hand. 
my handwriting is terrible, so that would not happen for me. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna do this other little flourish here. And you can do any colors. You know, the Voodoo Gel Stains come in a lot of colors. We've got um, Up in Smoke, which is gray, White Magic, Black Magic, which is white and black, um, Denim, blue color, Bayou Moss, and Temptress. So Bayou Moss is a um, interesting green color. And Temptress is a really pretty kind of teal turquoisey color. And then you know Dixie Belle has 69 colors you can choose from for your paint portion. And then of course mixing those up you can, your color options are endless. Alright, so we're going to go do a second little go through here on this one. And so char charcuterie, charcuterie. So I was listening today of how the French say it. And it is an assembly of assorted meats, like cured meats. And now people are adding crackers and nuts to their things and fruits and stuff and that's a-okay. I just like the wine, cheese, and meat portion of it. So sign me up for that part. All right. <clears throat> that little P there, that pair where well, the R is a booger for me here. So it wants to lift up. So hopefully we didn't get any bleed through underneath. We'll see when we pick it up. It's always kind of the exciting, nerve-wracking part about stencils. Once you pick it up, you decide, you see if you like made a boo-boo or not. And if you did, then you know you gotta fix it, embrace it. No big deal. Like I always say, there's no mistake except for not painting. So I'm like paint everything. We have a lot to paint in our house, so a lot of walls to paint and fireplace and kitchen. So that all has to, we're going to get there. And maybe we'll, you guys will be a part of our journey on seeing some of the, that craziness that I decide we're going to do. All right, so that one's good. I feel like our vintage duck egg is nice um, and on there, so I'm not going to worry about doing a second coat of that. Let me close this up. All right, so I'm gonna tell you guys, the easy part is this. This is the easy part. You know the hard part of the board is? Is screwing the uh, handles on. Yes, that's the harder part. So you do have to countersink, because these are a one inch thick, so you do have to countersink your screws, and that is interesting. All right, bam. All right, so to clean it, uh, Soap and water right now, a baby wipe right now would work. Um, if you don't have time to do it right now, like if you do a class and it's gonna sit around a bit, just soak it in um, rubbing alcohol for about five minutes and it wipes right off, like just comes right off. Um, so great tip there for that. All right, so got a little bit, I think I got a little bleed through right over here on the S, but I'm okay with that. So there we go. There we go. All right. Thank you, Carly. All right, so now you've got your piece done. Now we need to let this dry um, because our next step is to seal it to make it, um, to seal it for being food safe. So we're gonna set this one over to the side because we already have one that we started on. So let me grab it. We're gonna switch places this one. So we'll let this one dry and we'll finish it up later this week. Now, this one I did, this is a stencil I did with my Silhouette. So what I like about the Silhouette stencils, you don't have those stencil marks 
because you actually stick it on like a sticker. Uh, so that's my kind of the reason I like to do those. And I also like to do these. So it's kind of like, what do you feel like doing? So, all right, so what I'm gonna do on this one, it's a little rough right here on the paint portion. So I'm just gonna sand a little bit, um, just a little bit. You're not gonna do a hard sand. You're not gonna take the paint off. You just wanna smooth it out just a tad bit, okay? So we're just gonna tad, sand that. We're just using our sanding pads and it may come, some of it may come off a little bit, which is fine because I had, we don't want it to look totally brand new. I need to look a little vintage, right? Okay. And I like the feel. You will always feel if it's smooth. All right, so nice and smooth. And again, we'll do our little paper towel. I dampen it just a little, so I don't want it really wet. I just want to get that little sanded stuff off my piece. And I already put the um, handles on. Thank goodness, because you did not want to see that happen. All right, so now this is ready for the sealer coat. And we're sealing with the um, Howdy Do Hemp Oil right here. So I'm just going to apply it with um, one of our staining pads. So we have these, you can buy them one at a time. We've got the two packs on our website. So you can get all of the products really um, here on our website. With the exception of the board, you would need to buy that from Lowe's. Unless of course you're doing one of our classes, we'll always provide it for you. Um, and I would probably do this first and then put your tray, your handles on. But I wanted to make sure that I could actually get them on. Uh, so when you're doing your handles, there are cabinet uh, lineup tools. So that's what I use to line up the holes there. And I drill holes and then have to countersink. So that's where it becomes kind of interesting. What I'm gonna do is also add a couple more of these little felt bottoms here and here so it's even. So you don't have any rocking, but it also protects your countertop, your table, so it doesn't scratch up because people inevitably are gonna move this around and scratch up your table if you have it just sitting on the wood itself. All right, so what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and get our hemp oil. All right, and this, once it's dried, it's going to uh, keep, your piece is gonna be food safe. So just apply it on. Yes, it would have been easier without the handles, but that's okay. Like I said, I, you did not want to see that hot mess happen on camera. Okay. And you can use anything. You can also use a rag if that's easier. Okay. And what I'm going to do right now, so that you guys can see, we use these little scotch like little one inch felt pads. So I'm gonna put that on there so it won't rock on me. So I'm gonna apply that just to that base. One and two, and you're not gonna submerge this in water when you're washing it. You're going to, you know, wash it off, but there we go, nice. But like I said, you're not gonna submerge it in water so those felt feet are not gonna get or should not get in the in the water. Okay. Okay, this one's still a little bit rough. So I am going to apply some with a cloth to see how this goes a little bit easier for me. Yeah. So whatever method works the best for you. And as your board dries out, over time you will add more hemp oil to it. You can use this for your cutting boards as well. Like I said, it's food safe. At home we usually have always had um, mineral oil, not to be confused with mineral spirits. But you can certainly use the hemp seed oil. All right, 
and I'll just give it a nice coat of protection as well. And so what you'll do is as this dries, you're gonna have some pooling of your, your hemp seed oil and you'll just kind of work it in and um, do that every, I would check on it about in about a couple hours and uh, see how it's going along. And then you're gonna go ahead and, and just, you'll see there might be a part that's got a little bit more uh, pooling of the oil on it. Okay. Okay, I got some little fuzzies there. All right. All right, let's get that cleaned off a bit. So essentially that is all there is to that. I would pre-drill your holes before you do the uh, hemp oil. It would make it easier for you. Um, I just drew in little dots, like I said, with our little uh, cabinet. This is like a little cabinet door handle maker. So I just line it up, find your center, and then just drill the appropriate size holes. And on the back side, you'll countersink those holes as well. So let's see. All right, so I got all my little fuzzies off. All right, so now we're ready for, well, we wanna let it dry for a bit first. So we're ready for our wine and cheeses and salamis here on our piece. So again, very easy to do. Um, you can make these, we can make them for you. You can make them in our class. So now you know how to make a charcuterie board. So if you have any questions, just drop them down the bottom. I'll answer them anytime. And you can take everything you learned and transfer it to a furniture or anything else you can use the hemp seed oil on furniture to seal it. I would seal it with a darker color, um, not lighter colors. They may um, yellow over time. Um, my name's Ann again, Pearson Belt Home. Our website is in the comments. Use code 50 free ship for free shipping on any of our paint and paint related products. That includes Prima and the uh, Would You Bend products. So that's all I have for you today, guys. Happy painting.